As an Agana practitioner, I will teach you to avoid the ground because it has its limitation. If you train to take somebody to the ground, you will limit yourself to fight one-on-one. -on -one. In a street fight, limiting yourself one-on-one -on -one is not a good objective. In other words, it's not a good tactic. So as an objective, I'm going to try to avoid the ground. However, sometimes in a fight, you're going to accidentally get to the ground. Maybe the environment made you slip and you fell down before he even took you to the ground. Or maybe the other side is a ground fighter or his objective is to take you to the ground and you ended up on the ground either you like it or not. If you don't train the ground and you don't do your intelligence gathering, so to speak, of the ground, you're going to be taken out of your element. Therefore, anything, any skill you have upstairs in now is irrelevant and you lost the engagement. So you're going to have to cross train and understand the ground. You're going to have to understand how a grappler operates. You're going to have to understand positioning. You're going to have to understand arm bars, chokes, leg locks, so you know how to defend against. How can you defend against something that you don't know? So on an intelligence gathering, the Agana system has done research to understand ground fighting. Now, after doing that research and cross-training with other systems, we have come up with a set elements how to survive the ground, damage the opponent, and get back up as fast as possible so I can get back into the fight tactically. And I'll explain. As an Agana student, my objective will be, if I end up to the ground, to damage my opponent. I am not looking to submit him. I am not looking to get a position for a point. I'm looking to create damage and get back up safe. Therefore, we're going to go with that objective if the fight hits the ground. Now, on the ground fighting level, we had to go outside of the Israeli systems because Krav Maga, Isardut, Kapap, Lotar does not address that objective because the objectives in Israel are more military oriented. So what we have did is we have done research outside the Israeli martial arts. And I have to emphasize that because I have to give credit where credit is due and also because you need to learn your opponent to know how to defend. It is no secret. By now, everybody knows in the fighting world, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a dominant style in ground fighting. Therefore, we went to research that through seminars, through private instruction, and we did a research. How do those people fight? And we went into the Sambo. In other words, we went to the Russians, and we saw how do they fight. And we did a lot of intensive research. Now, I'm going to explain this. The tapes are not designed to how to be the grappler. And I'll explain this element is important and you understand. A lot of people have tried to come up with systems. Okay, how do you be the grappler? Uh, I'm going to uh, gouge his eyes. I'm going to tear his ear out. I'm going to break his nose. And then this. All these techniques are elements and tactics and weapons that you can learn in five minutes. But... The ground fighters have been ground fighting for 10 years and they're very good on the ground. What makes you think that they can learn those techniques in five minutes? And then you're basically fighting the same tactics plus their experience of 10 years. So our approach has been different in the sense of I am not going to try to teach you to be the grappler. I'm going to try to teach you to understand a grappler so you know what to expect, so you know where to go and you know where not to go and then damage the opponent and get back up safely so you know not to st get stuck there because that grappler has the advantage there because he took you there. If somebody takes you to down to the ground, that means that's where he wants to be. We have a set. You never fight the zone where he wants to be upstairs. If, in other words, if I'm fighting a boxer, the last thing I want to do is try to upbox him. He's been boxing for so much amount of time. He's obviously better than me. Just like the Israelis are better at shooting and using their knives, the people that are grapplers are comfortable with the ground. Your job is to create damage, get back up, and pull him out of his territory. So that is the approach we have approached within the Agana system. You have to learn what the grapplers do, understand what they do, how can you counter there or neutralize what they do, create damage, and get back up upstairs so you can, again, fight two people or simply get out of his own territory. Also, you have to understand that sport grappling is different than ground survival. In Agana, we call it ground survival. I don't call it submission fighting. I don't even call it ground fighting. It's ground survival. Why? I need to survive that engagement and get back up. If you are doing grappling or submission, usually we, you will do it in an environment that's comfortable for it. In other words, you're going to be on mats. And on mats, and most of the grappling world trains in geese, or maybe they're training in wrestling shoes, and everything is designed to work safe in that training environment. 
the first thing you're going to do when you're going to hit the asphalt in the street, you're going to realize this is not as forgiving as a mat. You're on the asphalt. We live in Florida. When you hit the asphalt, it's 100 degree. You're going to get burned by it. You hit the asphalt and there's little rocks and he starts shoving your head or your tactic was to put him into the guard and you start maneuvering yourself. It's going to grind into your shoulders and it's going to affect you because it's going to start shock circuiting your system into what you're going to do next because it's uncomfortable. So territory and environment is a big issue when it comes to if your objective is to take you to the ground. So if anything, you want to avoid the ground. If you got there, you definitely need to be familiar with the basics so you know what to avoid. With that in mind, let's get to work. In many situations on the ground, you're going to have to understand the difference between sport grappling and street grappling. In no holds bar, you'll see the guys a lot of times driving knees right on the ground. The problem with that on the street is if you hit the concrete with your knee in the process, you're going to end up scraping your whole knee. So that's a weapon you want to avoid. Any weapon that's close to the ground, you want to avoid on the street. Don't get greedy and want to shove his knee here and on the way you're going to short circuit yourself by raking your knee on the concrete and therefore you never got to knee him in the face to begin with. Every weapon you use on the street has to come from up above. Don't come scraping it from the side from the ground. Throughout the ground survival tape, you're going to see my training partners tap out. Now, in sport grappling or in submission grappling, tap him out means that basically you stop. In the street, anytime the person taps out, don't let go because you programmed in sport submission to uh, let go. In the street, when he taps out, he basically telling you, you are doing great. Keep going and rip the whole thing out. So it is important that the training while you train with your partners, is safe, but it is important that in the street you don't go, oh, he's tapping out and let go, and then he attacks you again. Anytime he taps out on the street, he's giving you a compliment. You're doing great. Keep going. First, we're going to deal with I ended up on the ground and he's still standing. In other words, either accidentally I felt or either he gave me one shot and I got stunned and I got knocked down, not knocked out, and I ended up on the ground. It is important that you understand not to decompose as soon as you hit the ground, and it's important that you understand how to stand back up safely versus going into a shot that's going to be too much for you to handle. Okay, given the fact that I ended up on the ground and my opponent is still standing, now he's going to want to close the gap. As he's going to want to close the gap, I am going to try to attack him. Now, as Justin comes in, I'm going to start kicking him in the knees, in the shins, and here. Now, I'm going to have to learn to maneuver myself on the ground as far as him starting to turn around and try to get to me. Okay, if Justin can reach and touch my head, reach and touch my head, that means he could have mounted me or he could have basically started attacking me. So I'm going to try as a drill to avoid that by maneuvering myself on the ground. So Justin tries to come in and I'm going to try to rotate, keeping at bait. You're going to need to learn to move on the ground so he cannot close the gap into you. Okay, as soon as you got that established, you're going to have to learn to stand back up safely. If I'm basically rotating and kicking him and for one second I stun him and I try to get up this way, I'm coming into his knee or maybe he's going to punch me and he's coming from above. Not good for me. We call this, you're going to eat the knees, okay? I'm going to have to find my way up without compromising my safety. That will be done by moving sideways, okay? The first thing I'm doing, I'm moving sideways. My hand, my front hand is going to be there just in case he throws a kick or I can still kick. Basically, I can still be effective. From here, I'm going to plant myself and swing my leg back and up I go here again, okay? Watch again. I'm here sideways, I maneuvered myself, I stopped him, now I decide I want to get back up. One here, two here, up three. Right now I got up that if he would have attacked me, I would have not taken a shot that would have knocked me out. When you're on the ground, remember, the mat is forgiving and rotating around as a training drill is great. But when you're going to be on the street, you're basically grinding yourself. 
So when you're moving around, don't use your hands because every time you use your hands, you're taking a chance to scuff your hands, cut it. Only use your body and your feet to move. Also, as far as the kicking, as Justin comes in, I want to always target the knees or the shins. Try not to kick high. The only time you're going to kick high if he's stupid enough to present his face and then you give him in the face, okay? You don't want to try to kick high because that presents your foot and he's going to grab it and then he gonna, he's going to attack you with it. Or he's going to grab it and swing and go to the side. So you only attack the shins, the knees. If he presents his face, fine to the face, but do not go to the body or to the groin. It's not good for you. He's going to grab your foot, okay? Also, when you stand up, remember, one here, this is your transaction. Right now, if he goes to attack you, you can block or you can kick again. All right, from here, one, this leg has to swing back, one and up. Then you can go back into your hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, now me standing back up is the best case scenario. In other words, I got on the floor and I got back up. That's Disney World. And it, not every day is Disney World and sometimes it's not gonna work by plan. Therefore, now I'm gonna start working what happens when he does close the gap and he's on top of me. The first one will be, Justin is gonna fake me over there, I'm gonna turn here and he's just gonna zoom here. Right now, Justin is on top of me and I'm the underdog. He is going to start hitting me, and i got to work with that. Okay, the most big mistake is guys try to fight back here. You have no leverage. The floor prevents you. Here you're going to have to shield yourself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my head. Now, it's important here not to only do this. If you only do this from the impact that hits me, I'm going to hit myself, and I'm going to bounce my head on the concrete. You bounce your head on your concrete, you got a concussion. A lot of time in street fights and even in no-holds bar mixed martial arts, they're hitting and the guy is out and they continue to hit because the adrenaline is rushing. So a lot of times you're going to get a concussion. He doesn't even know and he keeps damaging you. Not good. When you end up being the underdog, it's time to shield yourself instead of fighting back out of bad position or out of compromised position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to catch my head and I'm going to turtle up. Basically now I'm going to eat the shot on my arms, maybe a little bit on my head, but it's not going to knock me out. I'm right here. As I do so, I am going to bring my knee inside. Watch here. I'm bringing my knee inside. If anything, that will give me that I can fight a little bit the distance. As soon as my knee is on the inside, I can go to work. The first thing I got to do is fish for a hand. Now, as I fish for a hand, I'm going to still cover up because that hand is still free. From here, I'm going to shove my head up, just like when I do upstairs with the chin to schlock. One out. From here, my leg is going to go over the top, and down we go. Now, this is important. As soon as my leg is up, do not give freedom. If I give freedom, Justin can bite. Bite Justin, and then I'm going to let go. It is important that you shove that foot or that leg on his face. Try to bite now. Justin cannot bite now. As soon as this is established, you're okay. Do not put your leg over the top. It's unnecessary. Keep it in the pocket here so you can keep his hand contained inside. From here, you're going to first go up, up. Hit him maybe one time and hug him. Why are you going to hug him? You love him. Hit, hug him. From here, I'm going down and picking up my pelvis, ripping his whole elbow out. I'm not looking for a tap out. A lot of people train on the ground, tap out, and they let go. There's no let go. I got to damage him so I can get back up safely. Again, so as soon as I got this position, a lot of people start struggling. And if he's a good ground fighter, he's going to bend that elbow and try to slide it out underneath my pelvis. Come back. All right. In other words, instead of struggling, I'm going to come back up, hit him to short circuit him. I hug him. Now I got it nice and tight from here. Important, you don't pick up, open your legs. Keep it tight, and you pick up your pelvis. You rip his elbow out, open, break it. From here, come back up, hit again. Out we go, kick him one time, and out we go. Kick. Okay, now I'm going to deal with the same position, but a different variation. Every time they're going to attack you from above, they're either going to ground and pound you, or either they're going to go for a choke, 
or for a submission. In other words, every position will bring either striking or either grappling. So Justin comes in again, he fakes me over there and he ends up here. Now he goes to reach to choke me. Right there, it's actually a gift for you. You don't have to worry about him giving you a concussion. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go on the inside. Don't go on the outside. You're gonna go on the inside and you're gonna bring that knee across again. Knee across again. As soon as your knee is across, you're gonna push the head. Up we go with that leg, down we go. Remember to shove down. If you give him freedom, he'll bite you. If you shove down, he's thinking short circuit wise that it's uncomfortable. Go up before you start struggling for that armbar. Hit him wherever. Hug, straight down, stretch him up and break the elbow right there. Form here, out we go and always kick him on the way out. It's the same thing with the knives. You always shut the door with taking a, a tendon with the knife. Same thing, you going up, you better occupy the line, kick him to keep him short circuit so he doesn't reach out for you to grab you back to the ground. All right, now I'm gonna deal with Justin shooting straight in. All right, again, I maneuvered myself and all of a sudden he closes the gap. If he leads with his face, go ahead and try to kick him. Again, if he leads with his face, try to kick him. A good grappler won't lead with his face, he's just gonna zoom in and now he's in the middle. Okay, now is the time to bring him into your guard. In other words, he came in the middle and I'm just gonna bring him in. Now as soon as I bring him in, I gotta watch out for those strikes. I'm gonna have to neutralize him. I'm gonna do so by one, grabbing here, two, hooking by the neck and shove him in into my shoulder. I have to prevent him from biting me. If I cannot prevent him from biting me and he starts taking chunk for me, it's gonna be a liability. All right, so I'm bringing him right here. As soon as I got him here, he's gonna try to maneuver. Don't fight it, go with it. Don't fight it, he only has that one hand to work with. Maybe if he tries to hit you, you hit him back, try to kind of like calm him down. Okay, as soon as he's a little bit calmed down, anytime you shove somebody here, they're gonna try to pull out. As he pulls out, you're gonna give him room. Again, as he pulls out, you're gonna give him room and you're gonna plant your feet. From here, you're gonna come out. Now watch what I did. I'm here, I contain him, I hit him, I hit him. When I start hitting him here, he's gonna try to come up. Give him that room. Open your guard. From here, maintain this hold here and slide your hip out. Basically what I'm doing now, my hip is shooting that way. As I do so, I'm gonna have this foot flat on the ground and I'm gonna slide my leg across until I can hook it. Now I can't see where it is here, but I can feel it. I don't go a, a little bit here, all the way in until I can hook. From here, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kick this leg out and sweep this leg from underneath. Don't struggle with it, open up and bump low. Don't go here, it's not gonna work. And I'm gonna yank and push at the same time. Now I end up on top of him. I'm gonna go one, two. My students are programmed to cover up right away. If he didn't, it will be one, two, and elbow. If he covers up, one, two, open, and then comes the elbow. As soon as you have the elbow, head, one, two, three, put your hand on his chest, pump your way out, out we go, one kick and out. Again, we're here, he came in and he zoomed in. Right away I'm gonna contain him. This here and make sure his forehead is in the clinch so he cannot bite you. Contain that hand, go with it, don't fight it, go with it, hit him a little bit, Loosen him up. As soon as he tries to pull this way and you'll feel it, let him have that room, open up, slide in. Leg goes in, one, one, two, rip out. Elbow, one, two, three. You're gonna put your hand right here and pump yourself up. In other words, pump yourself up. If somehow there's still life out of him and he goes to punch you or reach for you, 
Then you can go right into an armbar from here. Okay, from your palm. So anyway, from here, one, two, head, one. Out, kick, and out we go. time I'm gonna deal, I'm coming in and I'm start kicking. He grabs and he completely passed to the side and he ends up in a side choke. This is very common with people that take judo, jujitsu, and they're gonna come over here, okay? It is important here that you don't panic. A lot of people panic and most of the guys that are gonna go here are gonna start squeezing and turning this way. Don't panic, you'll be okay. If you ever reach to the groin, go ahead and reach, grab his groin. If he wrapped and it's unavailable, then let it go, don't go for it because he's gonna start working from here. It is important that you understand the primary danger here being that hand punching me in the face, more important than anything else. It's gonna take him time to choke me out, but that hand punching me is gonna be a liability. So the first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna have to block it and hug it. Or block here if you already start hitting and contain it. As soon as I got that contained, I'm gonna work with that hand because of the nature of him having the hand here, my hand here will be free. I'm gonna come in and start attacking here. Now most grapplers will dig in. They'll dig their face in right here and they will prevent you. If that's the case, you come on this side and grab here by the chin. As soon as it's open, you're gonna go Adam's apple. Adam's apple and squeeze, okay? When you go Adam's apple, go from the side and try to grab as much as possible right here. Okay, that will short circuit him into keeping squeezing, and now you're gonna have room to work from. As soon as I have this here, I'm gonna plant this foot right here. As I plant this foot right here, I'm gonna move my hip out so I can swing my leg over his head. If I stay here and try to swing, can't do it. I plant my foot and I swing out. From here, I'm gonna push this that way. One, leg goes over. From here, watch. I attack, attack, Come attack, kick, and out I go. Because of the nature of a ground fight, I will always try to get up as fast as possible. As a Nagana practitioner, I want to damage my opponent and get back up. Because of that, lethal technique will be easier to apply in the sense of uh, it, will, it will take less time. Now, I want to make this clear. When you're on the ground, it's a desperate measure in the sense of this is the final frontier of rangers. In other words, there's no going fighting underground. It's the ground and it's it. Because the ground's nature of being the final range, you, that's why the mentality of the Agana practitioner is to finish off your opponent as fast as possible to get back up. But again, if your objective changes according to the situation and scenario and the liabilities that you have behind it, then you're gonna have to apply non-lethal techniques. This segment is gonna deal with Justin coming in and going to transition to take the mount. Now, as far as the man is concerned, that is the position that will be the most dominant for your opponent. And it is important here not to collapse emotionally when they mount you. Okay, Justin, as he comes in again, he came in to the side, transits, and now he mounts. All right, you're gonna have two types of fighters when they get in the mount. You're gonna have the guy who's gonna start just beating the living hell out of you. That is the street fighter. And then you'll have the guy that's more into grappling that'll close the gap and start trying to grapple with you. Okay, so in other words, I'm first dealing 
with the street fighter. The heat is just starting to pound on me. The first thing I'm going to have to do is put my hands like this. What I'm doing here is not only blocking, I am holding my head. So from the impact, I don't bounce my head on the concrete and I get a concussion. It is proven in street fights. People get concussion, the other side doesn't even aware that they got a concussion and they keep damaging you more and more and then you get brain damage, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is hold up your head. This will shield your face for both chokes and punches. You're gonna get hit, okay? Same thing as swimming. You get in the water, you're gonna get wet. You get in a fight, you're gonna get hit, but you're not gonna get damaged. In other words, I'm right here. One, two, three. From here, as soon as I'm shield, I can start going to work. Okay, I am going to shoot the elbows right into the leg, right into the leg, until one of them will connect good enough to drop him down. Okay, in other words, I'm here, one, two, and I'm going right here, and he drops him. As soon as he drops him, you get him in closer, and basically now you're in a clinch. It's the same thing as being in a clinch upstairs. Again, I'm here, first thing, shield myself, and shoot that elbow. They will drop him. As soon as he drops, you're gonna fish for hooking his neck. Same thing as upstairs with the clinch. From here, I'm gonna go right here to his chin. Make sure you don't grab his face. Don't grab his face like this because now he can bite you. I want the palm of your hand right here on the edge of his chin. And from here, I have a wrench again. I can slack him out. It's important that you don't slack him here. If you basically break his neck here, he's gonna die on top of you. And a dead body is heavy. And if he's bigger than you, then in most cases they are, you're gonna have a hard time moving off you. And if there's multiple attacker involved, basically he just neutralized you to the position. So when you have him here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bridge. As I bridge, I'm gonna bring this leg right here. I'm hooking this leg right here. In other words, I'm gonna try to hook here. Right here, okay, always as a rule, hook right here. As I hook right here, this will prevent him when I bridge to pick up that knee and basically anchor himself so I can bridge him. From here, I got him here. All I gonna do is pick up my pelvis and slack him right here, okay? In reality, I dumped him on the side and I slacked him. Now here is an important point. After you break his neck on the way out, as a Nagana practitioner, I want you to be a professional. In other words, don't take things for granted. On my way out, anytime I get out of this position, this is considered I'm getting out of the guard. I am always gonna strike on my way out. I don't care if I slacked him. I'm gonna take a precaution. Maybe you went to snap his neck and he's one of those guys that go to the gym all day long and pick up the weight like this and look like a little gorilla and his neck is not that easy to break. In other words, you want to break him and he had a resistance and you think you slacked him, but he's still alive. And then you try to get out and he's still fighting. On my way out, always one, two to the groin, one, two to the legs and push down on the leg. Push down on the leg to get out. So basically it gives you a safe way out, regardless of the neck technique. So again, he's on top of me on the mount. First thing, cover up, shield up. You have no business reach out. If you're gonna reach out for his neck, he can go into an armbar, he can continue to hit you. First thing, you gotta shield so you don't get popped and a concussion. Shoot that elbow, brings you in, one, chin. Bridge up, slack him here. One, two, three, four, push on the leg, and out we go. Because of the nature of a ground fight, I will always try to get up as fast as possible. As a Nagana practitioner, I wanna damage my opponent and get back up. Because of that, little technique will be easier to apply in the sense of uh, it, will, it will take less time and you will be back upstairs again and that's for the reasons of multiple attackers, the reasons you don't wanna be on the ground too much, too long time because maybe he's gonna deploy a weapon, the asphalt and the other objectives that we talked about earlier. However, maybe you don't wanna go into a lethal situation. In other words, maybe you law enforcement and you can slack him out, you can wrench your neck. Maybe it's a family member and he's drunk at the moment and he's on top of you because he had too much to drink. And again, now I will give you options without wrenching the neck. Uh, Justin comes in and mounts me again. I'm gonna start off with the one that he was striking. The entry will be the same. In other words, the first thing I'm gonna worry is not to get a concussion. Remember not only to block, it's gonna be your instinct as a human being to try to block. 
If you start blocking, there's no way possible you're going to be able to shield yourself completely from every coming shot. So one of the shots is going to connect, and that's what's going to short circuit you. So what I want you to do is shield yourself to begin with. Now you're going to get hit. Yes, we already covered that. Yes, you're going to get hit. No big deal. And I have to hold my head so I don't get a concussion. So the entry is the same. Now I'm going to shoot elbows as well. I'm going to shoot elbows that's going to short circuit him versus me reaching out. The earlier on the little uh, technique, I wanted to shoot an elbow to get him closer I, so I get into a clinch and I can go into my range swing techniques as far as the neck. This time, I made it clear that I'm choosing not to wrench his neck, therefore, I'm not shooting for his neck. So I'm here to shield myself, and I'm going to shoot those elbows to short circuit him and bring his body weight here. At the time that I'm shooting my elbows, I'm going to set up my hook. I'm going to set up my hook. From here, when I feel that his body weight is up here, I'm going to do the same thing, the same thing as I did before, hooking, but I'm not going to involve this end. In other words, I'm going to simply breathe, come up. And from here, as soon as I'm here, it's important that your hand controls the middle of the chest so you don't give him a chance to sit back up. If he sits back up now and he takes you back or he can start working on arm bars, the grappler feels very comfortable working from the guard. Okay, he's working there hours and hours. Therefore, you did not short circuit him enough. You're going to have to put the hand here to prevent him to come up to begin with. And then you're going to have to short circuit him. Of course, here you got a freebie, which is the groin. Again, one shot, two shot, elbow, elbow. You did not damage him yet. Therefore, this time I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn him on the way out. Versus when I terminated him, I just grabbed and pushed down. If he does not have pants, grab his skin and dig your fingers in there, okay? And make his skin his pants. From here, push to the side, Charlie horse here, right here. So when I hit him here, it short circuits him to use his legs against me because he can shoot the legs and grapevine and push you, pull you down back to the ground. I hit him right here, short circuit him, and out I go. So again, I'm down here. Justice mounted me. First thing, I'm shield myself. I shoot a couple elbows. He's down here. I hooked it here. I still hook here so I have a handle. My handle going this way. I bridge up. Hands right here, one, two, elbow, elbow, pull the leg across, Charlie horse, and out we go. Okay, now we're gonna deal with a different variation from the mount. Okay, this time Justin comes in, He's already mounted, and instead of striking, he's going to close the gap and smother me. Okay, in other words, you're not dealing with a grappler that his objective is to deplete you from your energy and get in a much better position for either submission or either to start hitting you, you again. This is the opponent you're going to have to worry much more than just the street punk. The street punk is just going to start wailing, and because he's wailing, he's going to give you more opportunities. If you're dealing with somebody that has ground fighting or ground submission or has been trained on the ground for more, he's going to want to close the gap and smother you. Now, this is a tactic of the grapplers in the sense of they're going to try to deplete you from your energy so you're so exhausted or maybe you're starting to panic that you're going to give them more opportunities to attack you. It is important that you learn to swim with the sharks. In other words, don't panic. It's the same thing when somebody goes to drown and they try to get to the top of the water fast, they drown even faster. It's important to ease yourself up and stay calm. Same thing happens here. Don't panic and don't start flipping like a little fish. In other words, stay calm, find your objectives and start going to work. Okay, go on this side so they can see. He's here. Okay, the first thing that he's in, because he's in, he's actually giving me access to weapon. Okay, as he comes in, I'm always gonna wanna try to have one hand inside. If you don't have the hand inside to begin with, create it that you can come in, okay? I want one hand inside no matter what. You can still hit. Because he's smothering you, a lot of people going to, oh, I'm going to grapple with him. You can still work your weapons, okay? You're going to have to start jilting him, hitting him, pinching him, and going here. What I'm going to do here is with the hand that's inside, I'm going to grab the ear, okay? I'm here, and I'm grabbing the ear. This will create that he's going to give me his chin, and from here again, I got 
that I can wrench his neck, basically knock him out, and the same thing happens as before. And that my entry is a different angle. I'm coming here, wrenching out, schlock, one, two, one, two, grab the feet, and out I go. So again, don't panic, find your way, he's in, don't panic. He starts to grapple, start hitting, start fighting your way in, hand is inside. As soon as the hand inside, I'm going to grab the ear. Now watch ear how it works. As far as an ear, you want to pinch the top, not the whole ear, the top. Then you want to twist it, and then you tear out the cartilage. It will tear out very easy. Again, grab, pinch it, turn it, and rip it down. Okay, again, I'm here. I hit him a couple times. I find my way in. Okay, as soon as I'm here, grab that ear. Pinch and turn and rip it. Or simply pinch it, and that will give you that his face will turn this way. From here, grab the chin. Same thing happens here. I'm going to hook my leg here, hook my leg here, and bridge my way up. Now, it's important. Watch here. When you bridge up, always up first, then turn. In other words, I don't try to turn because then all his body weight is on me, and if he's much bigger than me, it's not going to be available. What I'm doing, I'm first bumping or dumping his weight forward. Okay, then I turn. Okay, if I don't do so, I'm going to work harder. Remember, you want to work as easy as possible and create as much leverage or damage as possible. So again, he comes in, I snuck my hand inside, grab the ear, pull it, grab the chin. Make sure you lock the leg here, hook it. And one and up. From here, wrench his neck or snap it. On the way out, one, two to the groin, one, two here. Always grab and push the leg on your way out and out you go. If your objective changes according to the situation and scenario and the liabilities that you have behind it, then you're going to have to apply non-lethal techniques. He comes in, just in his arm, and this time he closes the gap. Again, I don't panic. I let things be. I'm going to hit him a couple times just to get his attention that you are not submitted to him right away and he's going to have to work with it. As I hit him already, I'm setting up the hook right here. I'm going to still sneak my hand in there, and I'm still using that pinch in. But instead of coming to the chin here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and put it right into his armpit. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm shoving it up right into his armpit, right here. What this will do is going to short circuit him because there's a lot of nerves there. I'm just digging in, just like we said earlier, like a bowling ball. I'm just digging in to put my thumb completely in. So again, he's here. I hit a couple times. I get that hand in so I can get my handle. My handle here, in this case, is the ear. Remember, pinch, twist, then pull. Now, all his thoughts is down here. He's thinking right here. As he's thinking right here, my thumb right into the armpit. See how Justin reacted to it? He's giving me that room and that space. From here again, I bridge out. And here, I'm ready for the elbow. Right, bam, one elbow, keep my hand on his chest. One, two, short circuit, coming on the side, Charlie horse, and out I pull. So again, he's right away closing the gap. I don't panic, I go with it. Maybe you're gonna end up moving around a little bit. Set up that hook, set up that hook. That hook is set up, hit him, hit him, get your hand inside. Ear, twist, pull. Thumb goes right into his armpit, which would also help you as a leverage to push him off you. As I have this here, see how Justin reacts to it? I grab here, okay, I grab here, and I shove that thumb in. From here comes my bridge, elbow. One, two, elbow, elbow, pull the leg across, Charlie horse, Charlie horse, and out we go. Thumb goes right in the armpit right in the middle of the armpit. And first I want you to shove up and then pinch here. So up, see how his reaction is? And then pinch here. I want you to dig in as much as possible. If you're a female, so to speak right now, your nerves are gonna be a great value right now because you're digging right into those nerves. From here, I'm gonna bridge up. And I go, elbow. One, two, three, four. Push the leg across. One, two. Maybe enjoy it and come out.
Justin again established his mount. He's mounted on me. And I'm taking shots, and somehow I can't get through. I can't bump him off. He's experienced grappler. And everything I do, either he counters or either he's right there on top of me. He's one step behind. Okay, as an Agana practitioner, I tell my students to carry a weapon, to always be able to equalize yourself, okay? If he's a much better grappler than you, and now he's on top of you, his position and his skills makes him better than you. You're gonna have to need something to equalize. Right now, as I shield myself, I can deploy my knife. As I deploy my knife, I just equalize everything. In other words, right now, this knife can start working as a defensive. Now, it is important, move for a second, Justin, that when you carry a knife, and I will cover this uh, in the knife fighting tape, that the deployment of your weapon is always available, okay? When you carry a folder, your folder should be carried in a low pocket. Don't carry in the jeans like this, and the knife ends up here, because if somebody mounts you, his leg will be on top of the knife and you don't have a deployment. So there's a reason why when you carry a, a knife, it should be down here or maybe in the pocket here, but it should never be in the little, a lot of people like buy a folder and it's comfortable here. Wow, it feels good. Nobody can see it. I can, it's not uh, annoying me, right? Problem with that is if somebody mounts you, you'll never be able to deploy it. So I always tell my students to have uh, the knife in the low pocket not in the high pocket. So as I'm here and Justin is mounted, he starts to go to work and I just can't, I feel, okay? And you have to listen to yourself when you fight. I feel that I'm gonna, I'm about to take a shot. It's gonna be too much for me to handle and I'm gonna black out. There's people in law enforcement say, you max out or you black out. Blacking out is not an option because when you black out, you wake up at the secondary location and God knows what they're gonna do to you and you can use your imagination, I'm not gonna get into it. I do not have the option to black out. When I black out, I give my life to the opponent. I'm not gonna do that. So if I feel that this is just way too much for me to handle, time to go ahead and deploy that weapon. Now, as soon as I'm here, I can start stabbing him. Now, it's important to remind you, when you stab, do not stick your knife in him. If you stick your knife all the way in him, it's gonna be very hard for you to pull it out. Now, is he going to die? Yes, he's going to die. But when I stick the knife here, maybe he deploys a weapon now. And now I'm stuck here, and now he's got a weapon. Every time you stab, it's going to be a poke. So you create a hole, and blood is going to start pissing, and it's going to hurt him. Versus just sticking in there, and then you uh, can't take it out. Okay? So I'm starting. I can start stabbing, or I can fillet. Fillet, I can fillet anything I want. I can come here and start filleting here. I can come here and fillet here. I can fillet his leg. I can fillet his back. I can fillet anything I want, okay? In other words, the fillet, as soon as you start filleting somebody here, trust me, the last thing he's gonna think is about punching me here. The last thing he's gonna think is about transition to another transition so I can put him in a beautiful triangle choke. You start filleting, game is over. So again, you can use the deployment of the knife or of your weapon as a defense as well to equalize the odds because if he's on top of you and he's much better than you and he's got the dominant position, you might take one shot that's too much for you to handle and blacking out in combat is not an option. There's only two places in combat, first place or victim. Don't be the victim. The other token, now I'm gonna reverse the scenario. In other words, I'm mounted him and I'm starting to go to work and Justin deploys the weapon. In other words, all of a sudden, there is a knife into the play. The knife, you're going to have to neutralize it right away. Now, when you're on the ground, I do not want you to seize with both hands. If I go to seize him with both hands and he bridges, I'm gonna lose the position. And if I lose the position, basically, he takes over the engagement. Here, I'm going to have to fish with one hand. Now, as soon as I got one hand, I'm going to want to use the ground as my ally. In other words, I'm going to smack that hand right on the concrete. Again, smack it right on the concrete. It's important here that you don't grab with your thumb. If you grab with your thumb, what's going to connect on the ground is your thumb. And that's going to short circuit you. You plug it. So when I smack it, it's going to get the back of his hand versus your thumb. 
and grinding it into the asphalt. I want to do at least one or two. Now some people right now will just simply drop the knife. Drop the knife, you retrieve it, and you use it to your advantage. If you did not drop the knife, you're going to have to neutralize right away that he cannot switch hand with the blade. In other words, that he doesn't take the knife and cut you across the throat. Okay? If you neutralize the hand here and he cannot use it, he's going to want to switch hand. That will be done by short circuiting him as soon as the hand connected here. One, two, short circuit here. I want him to think, ouch, ouch. I don't want him to think, oh, no big deal. I'm going to the other side with the hand. So I'm here. One, two, and right away short circuit him. Right away short circuit him. And from here, I'm going to enter here. Now, that brings us to the concept of overlapping. Same thing happens on the ground. A lot of people will get into the ground and say, oh, now we're grappling. Now we're doing ground fighting. And they're going too much into, I need to go into submission or grappling. Submission and grappling has great value. However, you need to continue short circuit him as an Agana practitioner. And that will be done with inflicting damage. The perfect example here will be one, two. Instead of me simply position my elbow here, I'm going to whack him one more time. Whack him here and put my elbow here. Now, when I put my elbow here, what I'm basically doing is I'm making sure that he cannot bite me. If I go to work here and he turns and takes a chunk out of my tricep, it's going to definitely short circuit me. So I'm going to put it right here, try to bite Justin, and he can bite. If he cannot bite, I can go to work. From here, I'm going to switch hand again. Important you don't grab here. If you grab with your thumb and he starts struggling, he's basically grinding your thumb into the asphalt. No good. I want that whatever is on the ground is his hand, not your hand. On the same concept, I'm going to come in not touching the ground. I pick it up. I pick it up and create an opening and then I come in. When I come in, as close as possible to the wrist, right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is tighten it up to his body. Don't start working. Make sure it's going to work to your advantage by having a good position in tightening up. I'm going to tighten up here, and I'm going to rip right here. Okay, now brings us the issue. He's going to tap out. When somebody taps you out in the street, he's giving you a compliment. You're doing a great job. Keep going. In other words, don't stop. Don't go, oh, he tapped out. I'm starting. Okay. And you're in the program. Okay. And now he attacks you again. Right now, I'm going to rip that whole hand all the way out. You're just going to rip it out. As I ripped it out, right now I know this whole side is completely neutralized. Only then I can retrieve the knife. Now, as soon as the knife is in my possession, I now have greater my actions into the fight. In other words, I'm going to use this knife. Instead of earlier just pumping myself up and come out, this time... I'm going to put one hand here and the knife right here. And as I get up, it's right here. There is no man on earth who's going to try to do anything now because I will slack him out. And right now, you're in complete position to get backside up. Again, I'm here. I'm starting to work. He deploys that knife. One, two. No thumb. Elbow short circuit him. Elbow short circuit him again. Switch over. Scoop up. Tight. Wake, take the knife, hand, hand here, and out we go. Anything happens, slack him out. <music> On the same token, I got to address the issue. What if he deploys a firearm? Again, I mounted Justin, I go to work, all of a sudden, he deploys a gun. And sometimes he might deploy your own gun. It's not always their gun, all right? Right now, I got to deal with the primary danger, which will be the line of fire. If I go to grab his wrist like I did the knife, he can turn it and still shoot me. Therefore, I'm going to have to adjust my technique into grabbing by the trigger guard. Again, you're not going to the barrel. If you go to the barrel and he yanks out, He's going to get out, he's going to cut me the front side, and he still can shoot me. If it's a revolver, it's going to rotate and still shoot me. If it's a compensated weapon, it's going to burn me and I'm going to let go, so no good. In other words, I'm going right under the trigger guard, and I'm shoving it to the ground. Again, shoving it to the ground. From here, same thing as before. Short circuit him, 
short circuit him. Again, one, two. Remember to keep the elbow close to him so he cannot bite you. From here, you're going to raise this up and put your thumb right by the side of the barrel. One. And from here, 90 degree break his finger. Again, up, thumb, 90 degree break his finger. From here, before you rip it out this way, I want to short circuit him again. One. Out. And the gun comes up. Now, as you pull the gun, you're going to need to rack that gun because most likely it's jammed. In other words, I'm coming right here. Again, this gun is most likely jammed, just like we covered in our handgun disarms uh, tape. Again, I'm right here. I'm going to have to rack it. Do not rack it down here so he can take the gun away from you. Up here. Rack the gun. One. And now this gun is operative. Hand goes on the chest. And you're going to stand up while aiming at him. Make sure your finger is off the trigger. Do not put the finger in the trigger because if you jilt now, you'll shoot. And basically, you did not schedule the shooting. Always finger off the trigger. The criminals will put their finger on the trigger. Professionals put their finger off the trigger. They will be covered in the Israeli combat shooting uh, series. Right now, make sure, finger off the trigger. I put my hand on chest, I get up, and I secure the scene right here. Again, is here, I went to work, deployed that gun, one. Short circuit, short circuit, up we go. Rack it, out we go. Rack the gun, up we go and secure the scene into safety.